Today we're talking about um, black black actresses from the fifties and sixties. Yes. Okay. Um, Hey, China. Hey, what's going to happen to Lady Sitcon? <laughs> I'm good. I'm so excited to uh, to do this. I appreciate you reaching out to me and saying, let's, let's do this. What are we talking about today? So today we're talking about um, black black actresses from the 50s and 60s. Yes, okay. Um, their, their style, their glamorous style, their body of work. Pretty much that's kind of what I wanted to discuss and basically celebrate their style, their sense of style and their, their body of film work. Yes, I love that. When yes. you first asked me, I was like, vintage ladies, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you first asked me, I immediately was excited. As you can see, I, I have one that I, I would love to discuss. One of my Ooh. favorites who is sprinkled throughout my house, actually sprinkled throughout my house. Okay. Um, and then I'm sure you have some. You got your paper ready though. I want to hear who you want to who you want to mention first. Well, I'd love to start out with Lady Eartha Kitt. Yes. Come on, Eartha Kitt. Talking about crazy style. Her style of swag was off like it was like at 150%. Even when she was in her casual clothing. She still was rocking swag, mm. you know. She was petite, like myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, ain't nothing wrong with petite brothers like a petite girl. Petite, yes, little munchies. Um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because um, Vanessa Shaw, a wonderful actress here in New York, she's living in New Jersey, but I, she and I did a play together in Black Wall Street, and she is elegant in her sense of style. And she's actually worked with, um, I think was an assistant to Eartha Kid or whatever. And um, oh. she talked about, cause she did a, a, a Eartha Kid photography homage using me as a model. And she taught me how you, Eartha Kid, when she sat, there was a certain way she's, you know, you cross your, cross your legs at the ankles. Uh huh. Oh, the at, at the knee. Yeah, the lady right. like. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at doing so because I'm bow legged, so it's a little tr it's tr tr more challenging. <laughs> but she she said when she Eartha Kid would like cross her legs at the knee, there was a certain way she crossed her legs and a certain way she would lean. Mm. Into, uh, but her but going but getting back to her style, like her hairstyle was always quaffed. And um, she was very feminine and girly in her, she would wear her, her dresses, her form fitted waist hugging dresses. Her, and her, figure was, her figure too was just amazing. Like, mm -hmm. cause she would wear, you know, back in the day, all those women, they wore, you know, a lot of girdles and corsets and all, <laughs> all that stuff. And she would, her waist was like, cool, cool. You remember she was, she was Catwoman, right? Yes. Yep. Catwoman. Yep. So during her Catwoman time, that Catwoman costume. Whew. You know, it's interesting when you use the word girly because she did. She definitely, because she was petite and she had such a sweet face, and she had a very girly face. But her voice was very womanly. I was just thinking the word womanly. A womanly. Should I not yes. call it? Did I knock on wood? We thought of the same word at the same time. <laughs> she had a very womanly speaking voice. Her speaking voice, there's really not many. I mean, there's a few speaking voices like that we know that really can even compare. Maybe like Cree Summer. I've seen there's this video of her talking about men and dating. Have you seen this video? I know Compromise you for what? Yes, yes. What she said, compromise for what? Oh, what? <laughs> yes, I 
I love that video. I, that it was just, classic. Um, what's her name posted it one day? Um, I mean, it's that video has been out for ages, but Janet yeah. Jackson posted it one day recently. Oh, I thought about I thought about everything that Janet Jackson's been through. I mean, I digress, but when she posted that Eartha Kid video, it was so timely. It was just, it was right on time. I was like, come on, Janet, compromise. Compromise for what? <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. Yeah, I love that. I love that about her because you can, it, well, clearly to me, and in and, and the past, she did compromise and she did see the benefit of it. You know, she was in some, uh, and Eartha Kitt was in some, let me see if I can pull it. She was in some amazing movies. There was a time where I used to go and collect movies. They used to have this vintage movie festival. Did you ever go? It was at the Adam Clayton Powell building um, over on 125th at Adam Clayton Powell. And I would collect, I actually have a couple of her movies. Honey, I got them on DVD. Nice. Nobody, don't nobody be messing with DVD no no. I, I still do. I still do. There she is with that. Wait. Ooh. With that that fab love it. That fabulous figure. Mm-hmm. Attitude. Earth the kit. And plus she was a dancer. Yes. Yes. It makes sense that she, she has fine. Such a yeah, she I absolutely. And she aged really well. She looked so beautiful. You remember when she was in Boomerang? Yes, Margaret, darling. Yes, <laughs> I like that she that she was okay with kind of like making fun of herself a little bit. Yeah, and that she has a, sen a healthy sense of humor. Like, she was like, "I'm a cougar, I'm a cougar, so I'm a cougar on you real quick." <laughs> I'm gonna take ownership. She I'm was okay. like, "Um, she was like, young man, come on and do what it do." <laughs> And we then the light, she was like, "Put down, yeah." <laughs> yes. Oh, we say your name. We speak your name, Earth the Kid. We yes, speak your name, Earth the Kid. Respect to her legacy. Yes, and, her and please let me. Speaking of swag and and style, I have to mention her wonderful portrayal in Anna Lucasta. <sighs> Can you take a moment? I need to watch that again. I think that's one of the DVDs that I have amazing amazing and you know during those times those types of roles were so rare yeah for black women to have like a role like that yeah so rare so rare right yeah honestly a lot of the roles that that come out now to, on a to a certain extent are, are still are a wee bit rare yeah well you know it's yeah, I I um I loved her style and it was she had more of a simplistic style in Anna Luke Costa, mm -hmm. um, starring of the wonderfully triple talented Sammy Davis Jr. Of course. Yes, let me pull up. Maybe I can. Yeah, I'll just talk about how like she so she she um conveys such vulnerability in that role. Um, yes, she was a little feisty at the at, um on the surface. Um, but as the movie unfolded, you saw her being very um, transparent um, and just wanting the approval of her father, the wanting the love from her father. Um, so I was very moved by her performance in Ana Lucasta. Very Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's some posters from it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a good oh, the one. original. Okay. Let me go back. There's the one with Eartha Kid. Oh, nice. Shout out to Bing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, there we go. Her dancing in La Costa as well, a little dancing. Oh. I love the bar scene. I love the bar scene when she walks in. She's all aloof, yeah. and you know she got that cigarette. You were talking I, about some different scenes. I think, we, and I, and for me, like uh, I had never, and I had, I haven't seen all of her body of work to be fair. But I, you know, um, but when I when I was experiencing. And a little Costa for the first time, I was entranced. I was so captivated from beginning to end. And I love that the complexity of her of her journey in that movie. Um, and her again, she maintained this sense of um, strong presence of femininity. And um, 
vulnerability. It's so important for black women, for people to get a chance to see black women in that feminine role. Because I think, especially during her time, black women were mostly known as homemakers, workers, you know, grant the, the, the children of slaves, you know. But to mm -hmm. see, we have so much more of a, a rich culture. We have black women who do a little bit of everything, you know, black women who are able to do everything and, and able to be graceful and glamorous and all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to do a whole nother talk on like African, like on various African cultures and queens and just all the different stuff from our, our history, you know? But she yeah. was she's amazing. And to what I what I love, well, I won't give it away, but I love what, what I came well, what the audience come to discover what she did in her former life. The character Anna Lucasta. Mm-hmm. You know, Anna, what were you doing, girl? Look at look at Anna with her cigarette. What were you doing right. in your former life, girl? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. Yes. And, and even the other actress in the film, she had her little wrap, her little rabbit you know, throw away or throw over, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. I just love the 50s and uh, the, the, the style in the 40s and 50s. It's like, I mean, Me I just too, love, I love those just, styles. I love femininity. I love women, to see women in dresses. I love wearing dresses and the red lipstick. And like, I just love all that. I do too. Who I do like you want to Oh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna, Um, well, I was gonna say, I love all that, so salute. Earth the Kid. We must salute Earth the Kid. Um, I was gonna bring up, of course, La Pierre. Yes, Josephine Baker. Um, oh yeah, a, totally. a, a little bit before um, Earth the Kid, I believe there was Josephine. Yeah, Baker. for sure. So a lot of us know Josephine Baker from her uh, the finger waves and the um, the banana dance. So the lady, the next lady that I wanted to mention. We, as we said, shout out to Earth Kit. So I want to mention Miss Josephine Baker. La Josephine. 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 <laughs> Josephine. She is known for this classic slick down, swirly curl moment. Not just the moment. She was like, we always say, before there was a Madonna, before there was a Janet Jackson, before. Grace Jones, there was Josephine Baker. And a lot of people, some people know about her. I'm noticing, you know, every generation is different. Our generation, we really know about her because of that amazing movie that came out about her life, right? The one with um, starring Lynn Whitfield. Yes. We really know about her because of that, the Josephine Baker story. I know that was one of my all time favorite movies. Like, oh, I love that movie so much. Um, but Josephine, look at her. She was known for her comedy, known for her dancing, her vocals, and her her style. And she was very ambitious. She mm -hmm. traveled from, uh, I believe, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And um, she ended up going, let's see, she ended up going to Paris and became like this huge star. Oh, people are always doing these. Look at this. They did a course. Of course, in Josephine Baker. Oh, wow. Honey, Josephine Baker is fabulous and to be loved and adored. I um, really appreciate her because of her um, her vivacious nature. She, you know, had a really good thing of, as far as like her style of um, comedy and dance and all of that, you know, she was in vaudeville, you know. So this way, it's interesting. Wikipedia says, Josephine Baker was an American born French entertainer, French resistance agent and civil rights activist. Her career was centered primarily in Europe. I like how they worded that because I, I she did end up taking the French citizenship. So the French, they like, you're not going, you know, we gonna claim Josephine, but you must say that she was born and bred in the U.S., but the U.S. didn't, you know, didn't didn't give her her just due. You know, yes, she had right. that, like, so if if Eartha Kid had the style, um, you know, with the, you know, we saw her as the the petite lady like thing. We we saw Josephine Baker with the the vivacious 
wild. You know, she did all the dancing. You know, she's incredibly known for the um, the banana dance, for wearing yes. the, the skirt with the banana. That was yes. like a classic, classic, classic moment. Um, yeah. But I'm a big fan of hers. I actually literally, I have little pictures of Josephine Baker all through, throughout my house. It's not even something like you would have to really be paying attention to notice it. Okay. Because some of the pictures are kind of this one. Sometimes I have it up. I change. Well, I'm filming all the time, so sometimes this picture is up, sometimes it's not. But um, I have pictures of like drawings of her dancing. I have pictures of her, like actual photos of her um, okay. in her various states of nude <laughs> or not nude. Yes. Josephine, Josephine. No, I just, I love Josephine Baker. Um, she's really inspiring. Um, and she just had really cool movies and stuff. What were you going to say? I've gone to her restaurant in Manhattan. It's really lovely. Yes, I believe her son, one of her sons started that restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's really interesting because, um, you know, a woman in the entertainment industry, you know, trying to live and love and, you know, do her thing. She was, she loved, she was like married to her Bengali like um, manager, you know. And I remember that she really wanted children and that she eventually adopted a bunch of children. This also makes me think about Angelina Jolie because she adopted children from all over the world of different um, races. I think she called them her rainbow tribe. And so she raised this this wonderful group of children. And I believe one of her sons is the one who started that, that restaurant. I haven't been there in a long time. You know, it, we are making this video during quarantine times. So, you know, even before quarantine, I hadn't gone there in a long time, but I walked by there when I would go to see shows over on 42nd Street, because that restaurant is on 42nd Street. Yes. Um, you know, who you got next? Well, I have the, the very fellow Scorpio, sexy, talented Dorothy Dandridge. Yes, we love Dorothy. We love Dorothy. Love we Dorothy. love Dorothy. I mean, where do we start? I mean, like natural, gorgeous face, um, out of sight it's smile. Beauty. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, always, you know, in very, again, feminine, very like um, form fitting, flattering dresses, the nice little heels. <clears throat> and um, and then we, of course, we have to speak about the role that made her famous, her Academy nominated performance in Carmen Jones as Carmen yes. Jones. Yes. There's the Carmen right. Jones image right there. Classic Hollywood. Yeah. Carmen Jones and I mean, and she played that role alongside Harry Belafonte. Yes, um, absolutely. It's amazing. Um, and, and, so again, that, and again, that character, like um, Eartha Kid and Anna Lucasta, <clears throat> was a very dimensional, complicated character who, you know, showed um, transparency and power and sensuality and. Um, and bite. <laughs> yes. yes, bite. Yes. You know, I, I, I must do a little, um, what's her name who was also in uh, Dor Dor uh, Oh, um, Diane Carroll. Diane Carroll. Well, Diane Carroll had a smaller role. She was really young then. But then the other lady, yeah. um, feet out there with the mother. Pearl, Pearl, Bailey. Pearl Bailey. Yeah, Pearl Bailey was, um, was in that that movie with her and and she was so wonderful as well um look at that yes. as soon as you write pearl it it comes up um let me add that to the stream let's see um you know i feel bad because i i should have mentioned a couple of um josephine baker's movies um oh yeah i will i gotta give there she there so there is dorothy alongside pearl bailey yeah. Young ladies who may be watching yeah. this video, you must do your research about these amazing oh, pink dress. black women. I know that pink dress. Oh, they cut those dresses, honey. They cut and measure those dresses within an inch of their lives, honey. 
They were like, like it's all about yes. it's yes. all about a good tailor now. You know? I mean yes. like mm-hmm. you can have you can have you can have a really cheap piece of clothing come to life just by you know bringing it in here snipping it in there you know you know what i mean just do a little a little bit of tailoring and that pink dress you were just talking about just takes it to another level Woo, these black people and this is in the 50s because i remember my brother and i were tortured as as children in chicago having to only watch black and white movies with caucasian actors and we so we were we we didn't even I didn't even know black people had were in movies in the fifties and forties. I had no idea because I wasn't exposed to it on reg, regular network t- television. So I was like, oh, I was like overwhelmed with joy when I saw Carmen Jones. I'm like, black people were in movies back then, looking that beautiful and glamorous and yes, you know I felt the same way. Um, I felt the same way regarding like not being able to people in my image that had the 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 look the glamour you know being an Amer. so this is the thing we are americans right we're black americans yes. and so yeah. the the average basic american style that we would see or that that we would see in terms of like historical images um never contained black people or if they did they had them in you know situations that weren't necessarily the most um positive you know there's one you just made me think about um um orfeo black orpheus orfeo negro yes yes that's another one that's another classic and i mean yeah i'm all look at that just even the cover of that is so amazing i i want to uh black orpheus that's a classic one um but yeah, Black Orpheus. So I know we were talking specifically about um, actresses, but I guess while we're in this era, we can't like leave out this this whole film. Um, what's this young lady? Is this Marpessa Dawn? Marpessa Dawn, this beautiful actress. You know, this is so. This is one of those yes. where you know we were speaking. We spoke uh, the other day. We were speaking about the black diaspora and like how we can claim ourselves or claim each other or you know i definitely believe we should delineate and and pay respect to um, american descendants of slavery but i absolutely can also draw inspiration from um, black people from other countries and uh this amazing actress absolutely. um marpessa dawn she did such a wonderful job she was so um uh, effervescent she was so effervescent look yes. at her look at her living her life so we actually did Good. a little tea we did yes. a um, we, t- we did a reading they've done a couple of readings of um black one piece i was in one of them um last year the more recent one okay. i wasn't able to be a part of um because i was shooting another project but um the one that we did before was mm-hmm. starring adrian warren who is who was playing um, Tina Turner <clears throat> on Broadway. So, you know, fingers crossed, maybe okay. there, there will be a chance for that to happen. Um, I said, if I ever went back to Broadway, it would have to be something that I love, like Orfeo Negro, Black Orpheus, or some some other like role that really inspires me. Because you know, I'm all about my country living lately. I want to have my country living. I'm thinking that we're probably gonna put some pieces of this on. Uh, why, why can't they? Why can't they do a Broadway revival of Carmen Jones? Like, why not? That would be amazing. You know, they did do one off Broadway. They did one off Broadway with Anika Nani Rose recently. Yes, it was last last fall. Oh it was my! Oh my! Anika you know Rose and apologies, uh, you're right. And what's yes. the sister? She got the name. Her name is not pronounced like it's spelled. She played the Pearl Bailey part, yes, I believe. I rem- What's that other sister's name? She's so sweet. I, you know what? I forgot. You know what? Thank you for reminding me because I remember wanting to go see it. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I think Anika Noni Rose is such a talented actress. And um, I don't know what, what happened why I wasn't able to see it, but I, you're right. That was like, what, two years ago? Yeah, maybe two years ago, something like that. A year and a half, two years ago. 
I know that I was I wasn't around yeah. and otherwise I totally would have seen it. Carmen Jones with Anika Yoni. Maybe it was last year. Was it last year? Let's see. Um no, it was twenty yeah, please go. So I think it was twenty eighteen. Oh, it, okay. it says, yeah, let's it was a short run too, I think. Um, let's see. Or maybe it's extended. I am just all in the wrong. <laughs> Let me close some of these windows. Ah. <laughs> okay, Carmen Jones. Can you see that? Yeah, there's a review. Seductive Anika Noni Rose. And Soy Joy was in it. Soy Joy. Look at that. So there's. So shout out to. Um, we're going to also shout out to Dorothy Dandridge, but um, Carmen Jones with Anika Noni Rose. You know, that was. I wish I could have seen that. You know, I'm such a big fan of anything having to do yes. with anything. You know, I hate that I missed it. Um, I did want to me too. Me too. just just a little bit more, giving a little bit more love to um, Josephine Baker. I wanted to mention, um, yes. besides her her controversial parts of her life, but her um, her films, her mm -hmm. her filmography. She was in some amazing films. I'm going to add these. I want, want you guys to see a little bit of those Black Orpheus. So look at that. So she had um, Zuzu. So I have these. Now, I am so ridiculous. I have these. Um, <laughs> I have these on VHS and DVD because, like I said, I used to go to this vintage um, <laughs> collector's gathering that would happen in um in 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 harlem so i got i have these movies but i was like buying vhs you know when back when people had that machine it had half vhs half dvd i had that machine honey so i could watch my movie <laughs> josephine baker and princess tam tam siren of the tropics Zuzu. what i would do is i would buy like one or two here and there um, look at mm -hmm. that. She was so vivacious. I just love seeing the videos of her, like, doing all her, you know, doing her thing. You wanna, you have another yeah, actress? I want a crazy face. Yeah, she'd be like, mm -hmm. huh? Would you like to speak like, on another actress? Um, let's bring in the wonderful Diane Carroll. We, we bow down to Diane Carroll. We mentioned her briefly when we were, um, we mentioned her briefly when we spoke on Carmen Jones because she did have a small role in Carmen Jones. Mm -hmm. But boy, oh boy, did Diane Carroll's um, life turn out to be um, amazing in terms of just really being, uh, oh, look at her. She just ended up being such a huge, um, let's see. Hey y'all, I'm just learning this <laughs> this app. She ended up <laughs> she ended up being such an amazing inspiration to so many of us in this business, honey. That's her back in the day. I read one of her, I read two of her bi biographies. One of them is called the most recent one was called The Legs Are the Last to Go. And it was good. It had all these juicy stories. Ooh, the stories were so juicy. She had some juicy stories. I have to get that book. Yeah, yeah, I read that one. But the other one that I read before that, I forgot the name of it. It might be just called Diane or something like that. And you know what? I need to get that book back. My homegirl borrowed it. Talia, my homegirl, she got a shout out to the Dressing Room Podcast. Um, <laughs> but I need to... Uh, the first book that she put out actually had more, was slightly more salacious. Um, the Legs of the Last Beautiful. Was, was a little bit more, uh, it was a little more edited. Look, we were speaking about figures, darling. Look at this. The figure. Look at her style. Look at her style. style the glamour. Look at it's that. It's just like the glamour. Mm -hmm. This gives me holiday. Look at the way she's pulled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the way she's posed is so beautiful. Honey, but but didn't she she's give it so to us? like yeah when she was on Dynasty though? When she was on Dynasty, 
she was letting the kids have it. Yes. Okay. Dynasty. <laughs> um, Honey, people may so acknowledge that, you know, cat, uh, cat what'd you say? She, she was a Tony Award winning actress. Yes. Um, and then she's Oscar nominated Oscar nominated actress for The Magnificent Claudine, my favorite film. Um, but just her style alone. You know that you know what I loved about Claudine was um her whole the extensions <laughs> that she had with James Earl Jones. With James yes. Earl, it was just like, ah, it was so good. I'm so glad we had a chance to do this today. This was so much fun. We have to do it again. And like, you know, we, we worked out all our little kinks. We yes. have to do it again when we have more time. Cause I gotta, I gotta get ready to jump on with another, yes. another interview spot right at five o'clock. We spoke on- Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt, yes. Eartha Kitt. Josephine Baker. Uh -huh. Jose Villa Baker. Josephine. Baker. Yes, um, yeah. Diane Carroll, of course. Diane Carroll and... And the wonderful Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy Dandridge. And you know what? We also, um, we jumped a little bit on to our lady um, from, uh, our wonderful lady from... Black Orpheus. From Black Orpheus. Was that movie popular in North America? I don't know how popular it was there. I think it became like now it's like a cult classic, you know. Mar okay. Okay. So okay. The other one we spoke about okay. um, was Marpessa Dawn of um, Black Orpheus, the beautiful. Okay. The beautiful Marpessa Dawn of Black Orpheus. Um, it was just an amazing um, movie. We spoke about some really amazing people today. I'm glad we had a chance to jump on here and do this. I'm so glad you suggested it. So we got to do it again. So I hope you all enjoy this little chat. Um, and I'm Sekhan Simba.